The Venture Star launch system was a direct response to the necessity of reusing space planes that could put satellites into orbit. By replacing the space shuttle, NASA would save a lot of money, and thus the project became a priority in the 1990s. The Venture Star would have become part of a commercial fleet, and was also an option for the Air Force. But exceeding costs and continuous test failures with the X-33 subscale technology demonstrator test vehicle soon put the project at risk. And as revolutionary as the endeavor might have been over 20 years ago, the official reasons for its cancellation may not tell the whole story. Reusable spaceships. The space shuttle was approved in 1972 by President Richard Nixon and first flown in 1981. It consisted of a huge drop tank that was jettisoned once in lower Earth's orbit, and therefore it couldn't be repurposed. In 1996, NASA selected Lockheed Martin to design, build, and test an uncrewed subscale technology demonstrator suborbital vehicle called X-33. The company would start its construction at its Skunk Works facility. The objective was to build a half-scale prototype for the fully operational Venture Star, which was planned to be launched for the first time by 2005. Payload costs would be reduced from a price point of $100,000 per kilogram to lower Earth orbit to a more affordable $1,000 per kilogram. Furthermore, the vessel would be powered by liquid oxygen and hydrogen, making it environmentally friendly. VentureStar was designed as an uncrewed launcher to be navigated by computer and satellite, but it was also intended to carry astronauts through a passenger compartment to the future International Space Station. X-33 Demonstrator The first X-33 test flights were scheduled from March of 1999. The model was designed to be launched vertically and land horizontally like an airplane, and a new launch facility was then built at the Edwards Air Force Base in California to support these plans. By the time the launch facility was completed, 40% of the X-33 demonstrator was already built. An innovative thermal protection system that doubled as an aerodynamic shell was explicitly developed for this model, and its seven XRS-2200 linear error spike main engines would mark the start of the next generation of liquid fuel propulsion systems. The engine was essentially a bell-shaped nozzle turned inside out to reduce drag and be operational at all altitudes. But problems soon arose with the rocket Dyne's Narloy Z, a heavy copper alloy used in the engines. This affected the vehicle's flight control surfaces because of an aft-heavy center of gravity, an issue that would prove pivotal later in the process. While other minor issues were smoothed out, a critical test highlighted a severe failure of the composite liquid hydrogen tank. Engineers and designers who had not supported the decision to use composite tanks suddenly saw their concerns materialize. A change of course was critical, and an aluminum-lithium alloy for the liquid oxygen tank was soon implemented. This was the same metal used for the external tanks on the space shuttle. After further tests, plumbing and electronics were installed around the front third of the structure. But despite successful runs, the liquid hydrogen multi-lobed tank remained the most challenging obstacle. The team had little experience with large-scale composite structures, but a five-foot tank was built and tested at NASA Lewis regardless. In November of 1999, severe damage was discovered in the tank during the fifth stage of testing. The engineers then filled the honeycomb walls with closed-cell foam, blocking the air coming inside and liquefying the fuel. Still, the solution added 500 kilograms to the aft, further affecting its center of gravity. The composite tank was a failure, and a decision was made at Mishu Assembly Facility to use an aluminum-lithium tank instead. A no-go. Lockheed Martin and the X-33 managers at NASA were forced to acknowledge the failure up to that point, but the project went back on track with the new tank. When the cryogenic composite propellant tanks were replaced with the older and reliable aluminum-welded technology, the vehicle turned out to be 25% lighter and just as cheap. However, former NASA Director Ivan Becky would set the fate of the X-33 during his testimony at the House of Representatives on April 11, 2001, quote, the principal purpose of the X-33 program is to fly all the new technologies that interact with each other together on one vehicle so that they can be fully tested in an interactive flight environment. If that is not done, the principal reason for the flight program disappears. From a technical point of view, the underlying reasoning was that not testing the composite tank did not make sense, given that the structure interaction with the tanks and support for the thermal protection system was vital. Additionally, raising private capital for the commercially designed Venture Star would prove more difficult with the aluminum tank. Becky called for NASA and Lockheed Martin to face the risks of an experimental program and absorb the costs themselves. Meanwhile, the flight milestone ought to be delayed until a composite replacement tank can be successfully used. He added, quote, 
to do anything less is flying for flying's sake, wastes the funds already expended, and makes little sense. The United States Congress took Becky's recommendations, and the project was abruptly cancelled. After five years, the vehicle was already at 85% completion, with one and a half billion dollars spent on it. The employees were told that the recommendation on the composite tank was to keep costs down for commercial prospects. However, the official reasons pointed to the disagreement over extra funding between NASA and Lockheed Martin. Aftermath The uncompleted model was laid to rest, including the tiled metal thermal protection system developed by B.F. Goodrich and considered the most impressive component of the X-33. If used in the Venture Star, it would have saved 17,000 work hours compared to refurbishment operations on delicate ceramic tiles in the space shuttle. Four XRS-2200 aerospike engines had already been built, two for testing and two for flying. One of them is on display at NASA Stennis, and at least two others were disassembled. Additionally, two liquid oxygen tanks were built, and they are mothballed at NASA Glenn. It was believed that the unfinished vehicle was in storage at Edwards Air Force Base, but it was actually disassembled. Lockheed Martin Vice President Cleon Lacefield eventually tried to restart the project, but it didn't go forward, and the U.S. Air Force became interested in the X-33 for their own use, but a request to follow through was denied by the government's highest levels. Because of the X-33 failures and rising costs, the Venture Star program was cancelled. There were rumors of a second attempt to revive it in 2012, but the proponents eventually moved on after a series of negatives from the government. The White House then vetoed any new evaluations of the X-33, and none of its technology would be used in flights to the moon. Instead, it was settled that more conservative but experienced methods derived from the Space Shuttle and the Apollo missions would be the best approach. There were also accusations of collusion from competitors, but the veracity of such claims was never proved. Ultimately, the X-33 Venture Star was highly criticized for having little to offer compared to other proven launch systems that began appearing around the globe. The endeavor was perhaps too complex, and the potential leap in spaceflight remained an unfulfilled promise. In Becky's words, quote, it was recognized that the X-33 would be a high-risk program, and it was designed that way. We must place the state of the X-33 program into this context of high-risk, high-payoff experimental flight programs. Failures and major setbacks are to be expected. Thank you for watching our Dark Space video. Hit the bell icon to get notified of our newest content, and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels. Also, please let us know about any other topics of your interest in the comments below.